Hey everyone, this is Justin with Bob's Watches. Welcome back to another Watch Chronicles. And today we're sitting here with David. He's joining us uh, with a very special vintage Rolex that has a lot of history with it. Um, thanks for joining us, David. We appreciate the time. Glad to be here. I've been a fan of your website for a long time. So let's get right into the watch. We're talking about uh, your vintage Rolex. It's a GMT Master reference number 1675, correct? That's correct. Made in 1969 in Geneva. Did you buy the watch brand new? Um, you've, you've had it the, you know, its whole life and, and you wear it or can you just give us a little bit of history? Yeah, I, I'm wearing it today. have worn it for 53 years. Uh, the, uh, the way I got it was during my tour as a, fl a fighter pilot flying the F-100 Super Sabre in, in Oh, wow. And uh, I used to fly, we'd fly close air support and, and interdiction flights on the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail. But now and then we had time off and the base where I was, Tuiwa Air Base, had a uh, C-47, the old DC-3, which was designed for uh, administrative uh, purposes. And we were invited once to go to Hong Kong for a weekend, and uh, we quickly took advantage of that. Now, when that, that meant to us opportunity to buy watches, cameras, and stereo stuff. In the stereo oh, I see, okay. So it was the kind of like the duty-free kind of That's right. situation, yeah? Yeah, it, it, and it had one of the great places to buy this stuff ever. And it was called the China Fleet Club, which was uh, built and operated by the Royal Navy. The Brits, remember, owned Hong Kong up until 1997, and they operated the world's greatest base exchange uh, called the Royal Navy's China Fleet Club. It closed in 1992, but it was wide open and going then. And we all knew that we wanted to buy watches, cameras, and stereo. And so, but what to buy? And so we asked a guy who was sort of the guru at our fighter wing in Vietnam, a guy named Captain Bob Kuhn. And he said, for the watch, you know, Rolex and cameras, Nikon and stereo components, pick, it, pick and choose, there's lots of good ones. But Rolex, Rolex GMT Master, the fighter pilot's watch, was what he recommended we buy. So off we went to Hong Kong, made our way quickly to the China Fleet Club, and I went to the watch place first and uh, bought, bought my Rolex GMT Master, which is uh, right there. And, and it cost $146. Whoa, one hundred forty-six dollars! <laughs> wow, they've gone up a little bit since then. Quite an investment, huh? <laughs> Sad, sadly, I I never kept the box and papers and all of that stuff uh, lost in the many military moves. But I I wore the watch uh, through the rest of my combat uh, missions and for the fifty-two or so years subsequently to to that through my whole Air Force career and uh, to this day. Wow. Well, that's amazing. I mean, first off, thank you for your service. Uh, you know, we really appreciate, uh, you know, all our armed forces and all that you do for the country. So I would like to, you know, say thank you. We appreciate that. Um, also, what a perfect watch, right? A fighter pilot and, you know, you get the Rolex GMT 1675. I mean, you said you had the recommendation um, from someone on the base. He knew his stuff. That's that's the pilot watch, right? That's that's the one to get, especially you know, being a military pilot. It's just so fitting. Is that something that you knew before? Did he, you know, he kind of let you know? Is it something you already had in mind, or you know, were you looking at other things, or just completely open, or already kind of knew that you know you you like the GMT watches, or you know, did you have any experience before? Justin, I did not know. I I had some I had some sort of a cheap watch that uh, got stolen. And so I needed a watch, uh, and I found out from Kuhn about the Rolex, and then started to read about it, and found out more and more. And so it was the one I had to have, and uh, and so uh, 
and I've, ne I've never doubted that it was the right choice. No, he steered you right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's survived all this time. I mean, it was a fantastic choice and, you know, uh, absolutely stood the test of time. So, uh, yeah, great move on that one. We actually have one here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have your watch in front of us because you, uh, where are you joining us from? I'm in Nobleboro, Maine. Uh, oh, we're from Maine. Okay, yes. Yeah. So quite far, we're out here in California, but um, you know, with the uh, luxury of technology, we can you know we can chat and we can uh, you know have a great conversation. But unfortunately, we don't have the watch in with us today. Um, I do have a similar 1675, so we can get a real good look at the watch that you wore in the military all this time. Um, beautiful watch. You know, it has the red and blue bezel, the rotating bezel. The GMT hand, track different time zones. As a pilot, that's obviously very important, a lot of travel. Um, and these are just such great classic watches. I mean, it has the Oyster bracelet, the, it has the, the old style rivet bracelet. Um, beautiful watch. So you were in the military and the Air Force quite a long time, um, and you said this watch was a daily wear, which I love. I mean, Watches are nice to collect and, you know, there's the pieces that kind of live in the safe and, and you know, they're either collectible or special or whatever, but um, these watches were meant to be tool watches and I think more so back in that time where now uh, I think a lot of them are turning more into a jewelry piece than a tool piece. Um, so I love that, that you actually wore it every day and used it and used it at work and I mean it had to perform well and it did. I mean that was part of the reason the watches were expensive. Even at you know 140 something dollars that you paid for it, that wasn't a little amount of money back then, right? I mean that was that was a significant amount. Yes, yes it was. And, and I'll tell you the watch, it just became, it had such a cachet among Air Force fighter pilots that most guys uh, who could afford it did so, got them. And it, it just always, for me, seemed like part of the uniform. And, and I wore it uh, every day, uh, both uh, when I was on a non-flying duty or flying duty. Okay, nice. So a lot of guys had the, the um, Rolex GMTs, correct? Was there any other watches that were popular amongst the airmen, or was it kind of like the, the Rolex was the king? was the king but there were some guys who had some omegas and uh, and other nice ones. and and i think a breitling now and then but uh but the rolex was king yeah yeah absolutely i mean still kind of that way today breitling does a lot of air stuff they got some really nice pilot watches um but again i mean for me if i'm <clears throat> if i'm spending my money um, you know on a on a watch for an airman i you know got to say the rolex gmt and now you have the choice between vintage or modern. Um, the modern ones are really nice, but that vintage just, it, it holds a place in my heart. They're so special and, um, you know, it's just such a piece of history that that would be absolute my favorite GMT. Yeah, it, it is for me, of course. And uh, I fully intend to pass it along to my son who lives out there with you guys in San Diego somewhere. Oh, great. Yeah, very close. Yeah, when, uh, when I go away, he'll, uh, he'll have this thing. That's great. That's even better. I mean, it just adds to the history and, you know, adds to the story, which is, is fantastic. I mean, we love, we love getting watches and, and you know, um, putting them on the site, selling them, going to the collectors, doing videos, kind of everything that we do with watches in and out day to day. But, uh, I mean, I got to love, you know, passing a watch down to your son. You almost don't get any better than that. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually had it assessed by you guys uh, earlier on. I, I uh, said, you know, how much is it worth? And, and so I got a nice uh, uh, appraisal from uh, from you folks. Very and, nice. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going to hold on to it and pass it along. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. That's I, I think it's a great choice. Are you a watch guy outside of this? I mean, I know you bought it because uh, it was you know a functional piece of your your day to day work, and um, you know it was very appropriate for uh, being an airman in the military. Um, but your interest in watches, is it outside of this watch? I mean, do you have other watches? Is there other watches you're interested in? Or is it pretty much kind of like a one watch kind of guy? I have uh, one other watch that uh, my wife bought for me for uh, a, a birthday present uh, years ago. And it's a, it's a Fison, uh, the uh, watch. And it's, it's very nice, but I tend to always wear this one. The, the military actually gave me uh, a wind up watch for a uh, hack watch which uh i used a little bit flying until i got this one but after after oh, i got nice. this 
I basically wear this all the time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard when there's, uh, you know, when there's that choice in the watch box, it's definitely hard to pick something else. I, I get that. Um, and you say you wore it on, you know, about how many missions uh, flying with the U.S. Air Force? 185. 185. Wow. Um, any cool stories, any interesting things, you know, um, on duty or out in the field that, uh, you know, that this watch was a part of? Well, well, uh, I remember once, uh, there are many, many uh, interesting uh, missions, of course. And, uh, and but one of them I remember when I, I was getting out of the airplane and I caught it, so I caught the watch somehow and the measle just flipped off. And oh, wow. so I had to have it, uh, I just clipped it back on. And then later when I had the watch refurbished, uh, maybe put a new one on, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, probably. They, I mean, that's it's a service part. So if it's something that, you know, gets uh, gets damaged or lost, it's something that Rolex can take care of, put a, a new one on it, a, you know, correct looking bezel and get it all back to new for you. But, oh, bummer, that's heartbreaking when that happens. But at least it's all fixed up. It looks great now. So I guess it's no harm, no foul, huh? I, I sent it away back to Rolex in 2017 for a refurb, and uh, it got back to me in good season through a jeweler in Bath, Maine, and uh, it's it looks like brand new. Uh, so uh, I, I love the thing. All right, David, I think that's great for us. Um, unless there's anything else that you wanted to share or that I missed or anything you'd like to add. I, I thank you very much for, uh, for reaching out and uh, I've, in, I've enjoyed this. It's nice to be part of it. I think you guys have a great company and uh, I hope someday to be able to afford one of your, the pieces I see every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know where we are and, you know, we'll definitely help you out, you know, when you're looking for a watch. we got lots to choose from. But uh, anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. We appreciate you sharing your story and your fantastic watch with us. Um, like I said, we see a lot of pieces. It's not every day we get to see the history behind them. There's a whole bunch of vintage watches out there and a lot of them we never know the history. So hearing the story for us is really special and, you know, it, it's kind of the, the ultimate package, if you will. So um, thank you again for your time and uh, thank you guys for joining and watching us. If you'd like to see more watch stories, more history, more interesting vintage pieces, um, tune in for the next Watch Chronicles. Until then, this is Justin with David saying take care.